welcome, welcome. First Lady Hamari Kier with this video on trend lines and <clears throat> channels. Trend lines are a means of support and resistance, as most uh, with the Fibonacci tool we spoke about in one of the videos. Um, the quarters theory, which is an advanced form of support and resistance. <clears throat> so again, trend lines are simply um, support and resistance. There are two different types of trend lines. We have the horizontal trend line and we also have the vertical trend line. Um, this video is gonna be simple. We're gonna keep everything nice and simple. Um, we don't wanna overwhelm ourselves with too much information. So it's not gonna be a long video. Hopefully none of my videos are long. It's short, simple, sweet. You take a look at it. If you don't understand it, you can look it over again. Something that's not gonna take you 30 minutes or an hour to grasp, but um, just something to think about. <clears throat> So I'm looking at this chart right here. It's the USD JPY is on the 60 minute chart. And how would I draw my trend line? Some people draw the trend lines um, based off of the wick. Some people draw their trend lines based off of where price closed at, which would be the candle. Understand two things in reference to the wick and the candle. The wick is what I call a point of failure. Knowing that at one time, let's make this big here, at one time this candle was completely green. It was completely green, but then there was rejection from the sellers and it brought the price back down. Now it still closed as a bullish candle, but the tip of the wick, the wick itself, is what I call a point of failure. The candle body itself is what is called a point of reaction. And usually, uh, the point of reactions is where price begins to make its move. So here, after this green candle, this bearish candle, the point of re this is the reaction candle, which uh, began its move downward. Okay? So some people, again, they put their trend lines. I'm going to use a horizontal trend line here. Some people use, again, they use the actual body of the candle. Um, I personally use the wick of the candle, and here's why. Being that we understand that the market is moved by self-interest, it's moved by people, people want to make money. So even ourselves, by the principle of where we once have failed at, normally we will go back and retry. And so what that means is that price is going to try to come back into this area again. So therefore, um, this would this very top of the wick would be the highest point in which I will set my resistance because I know at some point price is going to come back up into this area. Now, um, I can just skip a little bit of topic here. I can draw a complete zone from the wick, um, the body of the candle to the top of the wick, and this would be a zone. This would be my um, supply zone, demand zone, I forget which one it is. Um, in which price, once it comes back up into this area alone, there's going to be some type of reaction. Either it's going to react and keep its resistance level, or it's going to break it and become its support level. And for it to be broken, it's going to have to break above my red line here and retest and then go up that way. So this is the thinking behind your trend lines and in the zone that you create within those trend lines, okay? So, um, and also, again, of course, if you watch my other video on market structure, um, I usually use the highest point. The highest point would be um, where I would begin to mark my support and resistance levels. So right here, as I use the bottom of this wick right here, as you can see, it was still respected over here. Now, a trend line, again, is a valid trend line when it touches two or more points. Um, I also like to um, add in the fact that if a trend line is support and resistance, um, you, if you can find support and resistance at the same time um, within that trend line, you know the trend line is, is good. At this point right now, it is resistance. As you can see over here, it's resistance. It has been resistance. It has broken resistance. It has come back down to test its newfound support. Support, it's broken it, resistance, it has broken it again. So here is a valid area for this trend line to be. 
okay? So <clears throat> let's get this, this back into something else. Trend lines from a vertical perspective. Again, there's a simple rule I used. Um, I call it one, two, run it through. So I find my wick here, find the next wick, which would be here, and then I run it through. There's your vertical trend line. Right? Now, some people I've learned as well, let's say that this candle here came above, went above here, maybe even above here. Some people just keep moving it out because that becomes the highest point in which um, price we need to break. But either way, let's stick with something simple. One, two, run it through. <clears throat> so here is my vertical trend line. This level here signifies anything under this level would be my sell zone. Anything above this trend line would be my buy zone. Understanding that, as long as you are under this trend line, you should only be looking for sales. Now, it's a little bit different if you are actually trading the harmonics, which sometimes the trend line doesn't necessarily apply, but the trend line will give you extra confirmation. So if you wanna take a confirmed trade um, instead of what would be called an aggressive trade, that would be the difference. But just the basic principle of understanding this trend line here is that um, knowing what type of trades you should be taking um, from the standpoint of where your trend line is, okay? So even from this standpoint here, let's say from a low perspective, you, have, you can use this. This trend line from down here, you want to find a low point. And some people use here as a area in which they will put the trend line. This is the next closest one here. There we go. And so as you can see, this line, this trend line here, this vertical trend line, is support, is support, is support, support. It has now been broken and been tested as resistance. So now that it's resistance, we are below this vertical trend line, we know it's a sell zone. We now below this trend line too, it's a confirmed sell zone as well. So you have extra confirmation that you are still continually making sales. Hope that helps you in reference to the trend line from a vertical perspective. Um, from a, again, from a horizontal perspective, it can be the same thing, one, two, run it through. I tend to use, uh, let's say, this would be my highest point. These are just zones. Like I said, you want to be able to look and find uh, areas of confluence that your, your trend line, your support and resistance is supported by support and resistance at the same time. Sometimes you're not always able to find that. But as you can see from this perspective here, you have a lot of different wicks. So you, some people use an average so that it touches a lot of candles or more than one or two candles at the same time. So here, um, we have a touch twice here, touch twice here, three, four times here. So this will give me a valid indication that this area itself is a strong area of resistance. Um, looking for support, you can use, let's say, this area right here. As you can see, support, 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 come down as resistance. It's wick right here is resistance. So this area is considered to be a strong area of support or and or resistance. Right now, it's actually um, going to be resistance um, right now. So some people get confused and they want to make sure that's very accurate. Understand the principles behind it and knowing that it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's an area. It's an area for you when you see it to be looking for some type of reaction, what price is going to be doing. Um, within that particular area. Um, I can use this area here, or I mean, I can use this area here. As you can see, it's still within the area. That's why sometimes you look at charts and you see zones. Instead of just lines everywhere, you see things like this. And you're wondering, well, how, they, how did they make that? 
you know, they understand that this area here, instead of having a bunch of lines across the chart, they draw these boxes and they're zones. So right now this is a, a area of support because price came down here. And then once it reached in this area here, hit the support line, hit the zone, it bounced back up. So that's what we're looking for. How does it react to this particular zone? And again, as you can see, it's reacting um, and it understands that a support it comes down and it comes back up. It, it, it treats it as support again. It, it breaks support, comes, price comes down, comes down, support again. And now it has come down, broken it, come back up. So it's still some kind of level of support. So what is it going to do? Right? <clears throat> so you begin to understand what, what did it do initially? What was it initially? It was support. How often is it going to respect this area of support? When is it going to change to resistance? So you're watching for that. <clears throat> Understand the principle behind it. If you know what a principle is, a principle is a fundamental truth. It's not a law. A law is something that's constrictive, that's restrictive. Um, it has uh, penalties and consequences. A principle is broad-based. It's fundamental. It, it, it stays true in, a, in various circumstances. And so you're able to make decisions based off of principles, not laws. It makes you think. A principle, um, you have to have sustained thought. You have to think about things a little, little bit longer. Whereas a law, you don't have to think about anything at all. You just have to obey. Now, a principle requires you to think. So this, this is what this is. These are just principles. This trend line, the zone, is a principle. It's an area. It requires you that when price comes here, you think about and see what's going to take place. And then as price reacts, you respond. Hopefully that makes sense for you, okay? So now let's talk about something else. <clears throat> Understanding how price moves within, um, within the trend lines. Okay, let's just clear the chart right quick. Okay, so... Let's just take this area right here, right? We're gonna say this right here is the lowest point, and then we have this here is the highest point, right? Understand a principle here. Price moves from support to resistance. We know that, but let's think about it in an illustrative way. Let's think of it as a train. This level of support is a train station. Let's call it, I live in New York City, so let's call this 42nd Street, All right? And it wants to go, the next stop is Broadway, All right? Understand, these are train stations. The best time to get on the train is at the train station. Sometimes people get on the train in the middle of the train, in the middle of the track, and they, un and they start to experience a loss because the best place to get on the train is at the train station. So these are what we call critical levels or vital levels. So when price comes down to the train station, to an area of support or resistance, a major area of support and resistance, that is when you want to get on the train. And one of my other videos were probably go into explaining um, how to get on the train, and that's by means of price action or candlestick analysis, which is going to enable you that the doors have been opened, and now you can enter the train for either a buy or a sell, okay? Now, we understand that price moves between um, train stations, between support and resistance. What that means is that once price comes down to support, it will be heading back to resistance, as what you can see right here. It came down here, right? It picked up a few passengers. It went back up, heading to the train station, decided to come right back down to the train station to pick up a few more passengers. It went on its way again, got a couple more calls. Okay, okay. Came back down to pick up some passengers. And then it said, okay, now we're heading to the next stop. And that's exactly what it did. Now, what people tend to do is get on the train in the middle of the track. The train, the price moves on a track. That track is called a channel. What is a channel? A channel simply is how price moves. Price does not move like this. I was going on with my, my tool here. I don't know why it's not coming out. Oh, that's why. I had it as uh, white, white. All right, price does not move like this. Let me, uh, it doesn't go from 42nd Street to Broadway. 
and then it doesn't come back from Broadway back down to 42nd Street. You never see Price do that. Price doesn't move up and down. Price moves, it does move up and down, but not in its vernacular situation. Price moves, um, as you can see, it goes up and it goes down and also goes sideways, but it does it by means of a channel. And a channel looks like this. It's drawn the same way a trend line is drawn um, vertically. So I'll take my first point, I'll find the second point, right? And then I'll find the left, the wick. That is what is called a channel, as you can see. So price moves within the channel to the train station. Now, once it breaks the channel, it creates a different channel going back up. And this is how you can determine where price is heading and when it's about to break the channel, right? So when you understand how price moves, first the principles that it's moving between train stations or the major stops, and it does so by means of channels, you can then, let's see, I will put it right here. You can then track the price as you can see here. If you have the channel, our price has come down and then it broke the channel. It broke the channel, we came back to retest and these lines within the channel are also support and resistance. We know this because it is being respected. Price is respecting it. And this red candle here is the retest after it breaks this level of resistance. It's the retest confirms that it now is support and it continues up. And this is also a channel as well. It's kind of slim when you can draw it. Let me just take that off. Uh, this is a here. This is a channel tool that you can use as well. So that way it just kind of helps you. You can take different colors and so forth. And as you see, once price broke the channel, this little doji here, we tested it. Confirmed it now is support resistance and now it's in its new channel and there are channels within channels I keep on using the wrong tool. I'm sorry There are channels Within channels and some people trade by means of channels only right so this one channel was broken this is a retest, and then this is another channel. So there, like I said, there are channels within channels. This was broken, retested, and so forth. So understanding the principles of how price moves. Some people, you can get confused with channels within channels because there are harmonics inside of harmonics and so forth. But when you have these drawn out, you can just wait for price to break it. Um, then wait for the retest and then just ride the channel. You see that price has the possibility of coming here and just coming and just riding it all the way down. And so like I said, some people, they actually trade um, within channels itself. It's actually a method of trading as well. But this is, um, again, the basics of what trend lines are and what channels are when you see those things is how people trade. And so let me just take out the small ones because I don't want you to get overwhelmed with so many different um, things. Um, so let's draw a small channel right here. I'm gonna keep this video short, like I said. Okay, so prices come down, you draw, you have drawn it, so you see it's broken. Now you can, you can, um, start to look at price and see where you possibly want to take a trade and so forth if you want to use this and this is just basic techniques here this is this basic um trend line and channel so you can understand it so that way when you get into the harmonics and so forth you don't really need um channels or things of that nature but if you want to use them as an add-on to help you with your trading by all means but it's always vital and important for you to understand the actual basics of um the trend lines and support resistance and channels and so forth. So understand again the principle 
if you want to find a major area of support and resistance um, that would be from a could be from a horizontal trend line um, the best way is to have a level where it is support and resistance at the same time it has been support and resistance at the same time sometimes you won't find that like in this case right here um, but that does not mean that it's not a good area um, you want to understand the principle behind these major areas this is where price is traveling and you know that you have a good area is because this point of this is actually a point of failure this is the point of reaction of the candle um, you see that price when it has come down here is it has reacted here and has come back up into this area and then reacted here so you now you can be confirmed that these are two very good areas of support and resistance for your trend lines okay so I hope that helps if you have any more questions feel free to ask I'm here